retired from the mining industry a couple of years ago and what I can say really is that having fallen into the, uh, into the PFP world it's really been uh, a fantastic contribution to my uh, post uh, work life um, but also um, it's really making a big difference to the meaning of my life and I think that's perhaps uh, the big value that I'm getting out of PFP at the moment. Neville, you want to okay. say a few things? Uh, good evening everyone. I am Lebo Mugwili, the principal of Topodi Primary School. Uh, our school is situated in an informal settlement at Etwatwa East in Daviton. Um, most of our parents are unemployed, and poverty is the order of the day. We also have uh, learners, many of our learners are orphans, they are from child-headed family, and you can imagine the situation. And most of them, they are orphans because of HIV and AIDS. And you find that even learners themselves are HIV positive, most of them. So it is a very serious condition that we are working at. And, you know, being exposed to Partners for Possibility things are really happening at our school. So when I started with these Partners for Possibility, we used to be invited by the Department of Education that we have some session, Partners for Possibilities having some sessions, and we used to attend those sessions. And as we were attending, I realized that this is what I want as a principal because we know that we learn every day. So as I was at attending, I have realized that there are some principals who have partnered with business people. And you know, we are used to be told that you must um, try to, to, to run your school as if it is a business. And you know, I wanted to know how do business people run their business. So here am I fortunately having a partner who is a business person, and I said I wanted to know more. So that is why I joined Partners for Possibility. So, so let me tell you um, why, why am I here. Um, I grew up in, in the UK. Um, I've been in South Africa now for 40 years. Um, but when I was in the UK, we didn't, we didn't, I didn't come from a particularly wealthy background, but I went through a system where I had quality education, which was entirely free. I went to university, which was entirely free. My parents didn't have to pay a single thing. But the education that I've had is upon what I've built my whole life. And when I look around and I see what we offer some of the children in South Africa, this is not acceptable. And I feel that I need to do something about it. And this is why I'm here. Okay. So basically, I have realized that Partners for Possibility, they are interested in education. So, and they are all aware that education is a key to success. And above all, you need to start developing a leader so that the school can be functional. So if a leader can do it, the rest will, shall follow. So that is why we have joined each other. So when Dave was introduced to me, uh, we wanted to know what is it that we are going to do together. So I said to Dave, please, Dave, the first thing that we need to do together is for me to introduce you to the entire school community so that you can know the school, and then we can take it from there. Because I might tell you that I want this and that, and only to find that the school doesn't want that. So we need to, to, to give priority to the school so that this can be able to work. So oh, how did we get started? So we started by having, I, I, I invited Dave to our SMT meetings, all the meetings, no, SMT, SMT meeting, I wanted her to, him to, to be able to see how we do our things, how we conduct our meetings. And then after the meetings, we will sit down and discuss. Now, how do business people conduct their meetings? And then we take it from there. <laughs> so it was the SMT meeting, which, which means the entire school management team. And then later we, we, we went to the entire staff members 
and then we go to we went to finance committee you know as a leader you need to be transparent so there is nothing you are hiding so if you don't want anybody to be part of your school then it means you are, there's something that you are hiding so we wanted to be as, as, as transparent as possible so that we can be able to learn. So Dave was part of the SMT meeting, was part of the, you can see that it was the SMT meeting, it was the finance committee meeting, the SGB meeting. We also had our staff meeting as well as the parents. Maybe we don't have the picture of our parents. So the <coughs> entire school community. And then after that, we sit down and discuss how best can we be able to make things work. So that is the starting point. So, so <clears throat> there's just one or two things I would just add to that um, that Lev has already shared. And the one thing is, is what made Tapodi so welcoming for me. So, you know, it was a bit of a blind date because we, we didn't really know, we, we didn't know each other at all. It was just a name on, a, on an email. And we rocked up and by the, by the time our... Uh, LPF arrived, we'd already um, kind of introduced ourselves and we'd become quite friendly. We didn't really need the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, as things have, have developed, the thing which, which struck me about, about the Topodi community is I've been really welcomed in. Um, it's, it's like it's part of the family and, and, and I'm really impressed. And the, the things which are going on there are, are really quite um, spectacular, really, because the emphasis really is all about the kids, and it, it's particularly obvious to me right from the beginning that kids with learning barriers, kids without adequate nutrition, kids without parents, and kids without some of the basics in, in life are given extra special care. And this is an environment where I'm feeling very comfortable and, and also uh, very welcome. I think um, when we started, there was some transactional work which we did. We did a few small little projects, but actually the main thing was establishing the relationship between the two of us, and then the bigger community of, of the school. Um, part of the PFP program is it's, it really emphasizes the need to, to work on the relationship before all else. And, and Dina, she's here, our, our, uh, our LPF, in, in the coaching that she gave me is, Dave, don't do anything. Just get to know the school, get to know level, get to know the people. And for six months, it was all about me getting the context of a school, which is completely different to the context of a, of a business. And I have to say that the, the complexity of the work that Lebo does is far more complex than anything I, I did as, a, as, a, as an executive in the mining industry. Okay, we started with our journey. So Dave at least had a picture of what is happening at our school. So uh, our school is a full service school. We are dealing with learners experiencing barriers to learning. Uh, so most of the time, uh, schools, other schools, nearby schools, they refer their children to our school, their learners to our school. And they, you find that they even refer learners not only experiencing barriers to learning, but they also refer learners experiencing behavioral problems. So as a school, we don't know how to deal with learners experiencing behavioral problems. And, you know, it is, it's not been long that our school was uh, declared a full-service school. So they've realized that we have a problem with learners who, are, who cannot read. We started organizing books from Rotary Club. Oh, yes, it's gone already. Yes. <clears throat> organizing books from Rotary Clubs. And then we also had organized the library, the mobile library for our school. And then we also had the reading goggles to come and read for our children so that we can improve uh, reading at our school. So I indicated, I, 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 want, I did not want Dave only to concentrate on me as a principal, but on the, on the school in totality. So we went up to uh, involving the, the, you can see a constable there with us. Um, we had a learner who was raped and then a, a, a grade three learner. And then we, we discussed that with, with Dave, how best can we able to assist? So we went there to the constable to tell the constable that you have to be visible next to the school in the morning and after school. Because the learner was raped immediately after school when going home. So that, that thing helped. As is, we also have a learner 
because you know our school, because it is a PFP, it is a, a safe school. Elena from another school was mutilated. I, I think you know about the case uh, just before we close. So I was just excited that at least our learners are our learners are that. safe <laughs> as a school. Okay. But now we have realized that, you know, one year is not enough. So we are continuing with our partnership. I think there's, there's, so, much, there's so much to share and, and, and time is short, but there are one or two things which I really do have to say about, about what, what I have learned. Um, <coughs> there's, I think the most important thing which I would like to share with you today is that <clears throat> around the dinner tables in the suburbs, we, we kind of think that all the schools are government schools are broken. Mm -hmm. um, but when you actually go to a school and you get to meet the people there, the single story which exists, which is that schools are not working, is just completely wrong. Mm -hmm. And Levo and her team are, are really a great example of, of, of people who put their whole heart into, into the, the benefit of the kids. And so it's up to us to, to show that there is, in fact, another story going on um, in, in our schools. Um, the importance of showing up and just being there for somebody when, when, they need, when they need your support, it really does make a real difference. Um, and the last thing I'd like to share, and this is really, I think, important for the business community here, people who might like to consider themselves to be business partners, is that some of the skills that I've learned during the course of the journey with, with Lebo together, I'm using them now in a little bit of mining consulting. And the, feed, the feedback that I'm getting from my mining colleagues Gee, this is a new way of doing things. This is much better. And, and my, uh, I've got so much work, I have to turn it away now. Because the, uh, but, but the new method of, of working like this uh, is, is really uh, making a big impact in, in business. Yeah, I used to, you know, I did not want to hear anything from an educator. You know, I just want Come step them. closer to this. Okay. Okay. I just want them to listen and do what I say. <laughs> but what I've learned from PFP is that you need to listen. Listening is a skill. And by listening, you are making the relationship to be better. And when relationships are better, there is peace at the school. And when there is peace, there is 100% performance by educators. And when they perform, learners are going to benefit and the entire community is going to benefit.